Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink and doing a little bit of experimenting and watercoloring for today's card. I have uh, a little pile here of whimsy stamps that I showed in a recent haul video that they'd sent me and I kept looking at this little bunny balloons set and my mind just kept thinking. <laughs> so I wanted to play around with some watercolor so I pulled out my Arches cold press watercolor paper which I've admitted I hoard this paper. It's not cheap but it is gorgeous. It's not even paper technically, it's cotton and it takes watercolor like a dream. So I pulled out the pad that I have of it and I had a piece that was already cut down so I cut it in half. So this ends up being a four inch by eight and a quarter inch piece. And I was originally gonna make just a regular like A2 size card, but in my head, I was thinking of these little, you know, bunnies floating with the balloons. And I was like, I need a taller um, workspace here for a scene. So then I started thinking a tall card. And then I thought about something that would most likely fit in a business envelope. If I was thinking I should have made it more narrow. But like I said, I'd cut that piece in half and I didn't wanna waste any of it. <laughs> So I'm using my stamp platform and I'm stamping these two bunnies multiple times with Ink on Three's Blackout Ink. This watercolor paper has some texture to it and getting fine details requires multiple stamping. So I stamped the images and I originally was going to paint like ground along the bottom and have them like just barely floating off the ground. <laughs> and then I kept looking at the images in the flyby stamp set and that little plane and I was like... How about they've just really floated off? So I stamped the little plane and the hello word along the bottom of this. And there's two little clouds in that set as well. So I stamped those um, a couple times with that blackout ink. And then I just used the backing of the packaging to be able to reposition those clouds without having to clean them off and so that they didn't smear any of the ink on this watercolor paper. So then I can move them around and figure out where I want to place those on this card front here. And then I can remove that piece of packaging and then ink up those clouds and just stamp them onto the uh, watercolor paper. So once I've got everything stamped and I'm happy with it, I'm going to tape this down to a hardboard and I'm just using a washi tape. Um, if you're planning on doing a lot of like heavy water, anything with watercoloring, don't use washi tape, use, you know, painter's tape or um, the purple tape that we like so much because washi tape isn't meant to hold up underwater. It worked fine for this, but I wasn't worried about getting, you know, a super crisp border or anything like that. But I've just noticed it definitely doesn't hold up, but it comes in handy. You know, it's already sitting on my desk and it just works. So I'm using my Mission Gold watercolors to paint this and I did the background first. Very simple. I just um, mixed up one of my blues with a bunch of water so it's just kind of a lighter color. It will dry back even lighter and I tried to move quickly enough to not get any hard edges which is just um, you get hard edges when um, say all those like lines where the color ends there. If that dries too much and then you go in to finish and add more color it ends up drying back and you see you know lines and water spots and things like that which a lot of times I don't really care but for this I wanted a more smooth background so I worked fairly quickly to get that color completely painted on I'm just using a silver I think this was a size yes a size six brush here and I could have also um, used liquid masking fluid on all of these images to make painting the background easier um, by masking them all off but that would have taken longer <laughs> and I've said this before I don't have the patience even on this background it's a large background for me and you know I put a fair bit of time painting it but not as long as some and yeah like I my start out with good intentions and then I just you know I start getting bored or I start getting you know I'm running out of time my kids need to be fed you know all those things <laughs> So I just do what I can do, but painting a simple background like this, it wasn't difficult to just kind of go around the images. In a few spots, I did get the blue over onto like the balloons and the clouds, but I'm gonna paint over that anyway, so I wasn't too worried about it. I made sure my background was completely dry before I start adding in the colors for all the other images though, because if it was wet, these would start bleeding past the lines and I would have a hot mess. Um, I've said this before as well, um, anyone who's watched my videos, you know, I just, I usually stick to my, my cans and XL watercolor paper, etc. because it's cheap. Um, if you've used that though, and you've never used a better quality like this Arches, I recommend it. If you are interested 
in experimenting more with watercolor. It is just, it's a completely different experience. It takes color and it takes water completely differently. And I like to use the arches when I'm, you know, going to paint a scene like this or, you know, something that I know I'm going to be spending a bit more time than I usually do on. And I want guaranteed good results. So I'm not experimenting quite as much. Whereas with cheaper watercolor papers like the Canson and whatnot, um, you're fighting the paper more. Colors just, you know, don't show up the way they're supposed to. The water doesn't move the way it's supposed to. It still works. I'll still keep using it because I've got tons of it. <laughs> but I do really like this Arches. So I just keep going in with um, these watercolors and just kind of painting in layers here. And I dry them with my heat tool. I don't let them air dry. Um, it does change the looks of things a lot of times if you speed up the drying process. But again, I don't have patience. And I wanted to be able to go back in and add more layers. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to light theory or anything like that. Um, you know, putting the shadows all in the same areas and all the images to make things consistent. I was just adding color and just kind of letting my mind wander while I was doing this. So I wasn't even looking half the time at the camera. Like I forget sometimes that it's even, you know, filming. So there were parts I had to cut out because I was, you know, painting along the bottom like the airplane and that and you don't even see it because it was completely off screen. So I just kept going along painting these in. It wasn't super difficult because all these images are separate. It's a whole other story when you're painting, you know, a floral image or things where all the images are kind of right next to each other overlapping, etc. But with this, it was simple because like all the clouds are separate, each bunny separate, the balloons aren't touching, the airplane separate. So I could just keep going along and doing each area and then letting it dry while I paint in something else. So I just kept working in layers and a lot of times I would clean off my brush so that there was nothing but just clean water on it and would move kind of the color around or remove some of the color on areas where I would apply it too dark. And then once the areas were dry, I'd go back and add a second layer of color. So with the balloons, I added a second layer to really intensify the color on those. The bunnies, I kept going back and forth because I just couldn't leave well enough alone as usual. <laughs> like the one I wanted to be obviously a little brown bunny and the other one, he was kind of a calico bunny. And then he just got messier and scruffier the more I painted him. <laughs> He started just kind of developing his own little personality, but these images were so cute. I was just, I was having fun with all of it regardless. So I just kept going in and adding more paint, more watercolor. And then <clears throat> once I was satisfied with everything and decided I'm not going to keep messing with it because I'm just going to end up turning this all into a muddy mess. Um, I wanted to add highlights and I've, I've mentioned this before in videos. I am the worst for intentionally leaving areas for highlights while coloring. I like to add them in after, it's just easier that way. So um, that's what I did here. I just have some Windsor and Newton white gouache. And um, if you're not familiar with gouache, it's kind of a cross between acrylic paint and watercolor. So not quite as pigmented as full on acrylic paint and not as transparent as watercolor. So um, I noticed with this, I kind of watered it down first and the first layer of highlights, as it dried, it almost completely faded right into the watercolor. So I ended up going over everything multiple times and using just a stronger concentration of the gouache to get it as white as I wanted. If I, if you want really white, white highlights, my favorite is Copic Opaque White, which I've shown in tons of videos. That is like my holy grail, you know, all hail the Copic Opaque White. It's amazing. The white gouache though, I like it too. It's just not as white. So what was left on my acrylic block, I splattered onto the background while I was at it. And then I went along and outlined the bunnies and the balloons and ended up actually outlining the hello sentiment. Um, I used my pilot addressing pen, which is extremely black. I don't do this very often. I've I actually said this, I think, in just my last video. Um, I, again, don't have the patience. <laughs> but with these, since I colored everything and since this is the focus of the card, like I am not adding any embellishments. I'm not going to add any glitter. I'm not going to add any die cuts. So the, this is the card. So I wanted to outline these bunnies just to bring that definition back and kind of make them pop a little bit more. So I just outlined them with this addressing pen and it gives it a little bit more also of a hand-drawn look because of the texture of the paper. You, I couldn't get smooth lines with the pen to save my life, but I was okay with it. 
So the background obviously is completely dry. You want to make sure, regardless of the type, whether you're using washi tape or painter's tape or anything, you want to make sure everything's dry before you remove it because if it is wet at all, it will tear. doesn't matter what paper you use, anything. So you always want to make sure everything's dry before you peel that tape off. And then I didn't want to trim this down at all. And I decided for my card base to keep it the exact size of that panel because I also discovered, because like I said, I'm just like flying by the seat of my pants. I should have pulled out a business size envelope before I started. Um, Cause then, like I said, I would have made it narrower and a little bit longer, but I did afterwards and realized to make this even fit in a business envelope, the card basically needed to be the size of this panel and no bigger. So I cut down a piece of white cardstock to eight inches by eight and a quarter inches. And then I'm going to score it in half. So this will end up being an eight and a quarter inch by four inch card that will fit in a business sized envelope. So I didn't get to, you know, adhere anything like I'd meant to make the card a little bit bigger. So there'd be a bit more of a border around the watercolor panel, but then it wouldn't fit in a business size envelope. <laughs> so this is what Amy gets for, you know, going outside her A2 box and not paying attention as always, but it, it still worked. So I've got my card base and I stamped a sentiment from that um, bunny balloons set and I stamped that on the inside with that same blackout ink. And then I grabbed those clouds from the flyby stamp set and I just stamped those with Simon's surf blue ink along the inside of the card as well, just to, you know, give it a little something. So once I've got those stamped to adhere that watercolor paper to my card base, I used um, score tape for this because... Um, like I said, it's got, it's got a good texture to it. And I wanted to make sure this adhered really, really well. So I just covered the back of this with the score tape, which I don't reach for often enough. And yet it's an amazing tape. So peeled off the backing. I'm going to stick that onto my card base and that's going to finish off my card for today. So as always, I'll have a link below the video to my blog post with links to all of the supplies used. So you can check that out below if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and for subscribing and for thumbs upping and for commenting on my videos. Make sure to hit the little notification bell next to the subscribe if you hadn't, if you haven't already, and then you'll get notified when I post new videos, which is almost every day. And yeah, I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.